vote for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network. All right. Happy Halloween, everyone. This is Fade to Black. It is, in case you didn't know, today is Tuesday, October 31st, 2023. Tonight is our annual Halloween special. Uh, we've got David Palmer here, the Leo King, and I'm gonna. I'm, I'm just gonna jump straight into it tonight. Um, uh, just uh, I'll get some uh, house cleaning out of the way. Get your faded black T-shirts. There's two ways to get them. There are two shirts to get. The links are below. Go and get your T-shirts and and help support the show. Everything is autographed. Everything includes shipping. Okay, so. Order your T-shirts. The links are below. Number two is Stairway to the Stars. It's coming up November 10th, 11th, and 12th at the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada on the Strip. The only event of its kind ever to be on the Las Vegas Strip. That's that's an amazing thing in of itself. But on top of that, it's the amount of speakers. It's everything that we've got going on. We're going to Area 51. We've got a dinner gala. We're giving away autographed guitars from rock stars. We've got all of that and, and a bunch of other memorabilia that we're going to be giving away because that, that dinner gala is for our foundation, okay? We feed the homeless, we clean the beaches, we plant trees, we educate, we do all kinds of things with the foundation. So that's what this is all about. Come out to Stairway to the Stars in Las Vegas, Nevada, November 10th, 11th, and 12th. The links for that are below. There's a promo code there for a discount on your tickets. But that's not the reason to go. The reason to go is the Leo King. He will be there. David Palmer will be there. He's with us tonight. It is Halloween. Um, now, we're going to be talking about Halloween, but we're going to talk about the stars, too, as well. The significance of this day, the significance of the world, where we are, and everything else in the world of astrology. We're going to be covering that and some other topics as well, because it's David, the Leo King Palmer. You never know where the conversation's going to go with David. And his link is below. It's very simple, theleoking.com. Go and check out his shows. Check out everything that he's going uh, that he's got going on. And that includes Dude Hangs on Instagram. And I just want to do it right now. I'm going to bring him in. David Palmer. There he is. How What's going doing? on, Jimmy? Good to be back. Man, it's so good to see your face, my friend. Same here, and I, I get to see your face all next weekend. Super stoked. Yeah, I know, right? And uh, here's the thing. I, I, I've got a slight echo uh, going on. Oh. So I can hear myself in your speakers, and so can everyone else. Should okay. be fixed now. Oh, now it's fixed. See, that's because you're the Leo King. <laughs> hey, did you? Did you know, uh, oh, by the way, uh, David's new uh, nickname, Pops. It's Pops. Pops or Pops a lot. Pop, sir, Pops a lot. I got to tell you, uh, David, uh, uh, I've said this uh, to you too many times, but congratulations. Um, not only do the both of you look like happy and wonderful parents, but I'm going to tell you something. You've been blessed with one of the most beautiful children I have ever seen. And I could just, I could, I could see it coming. I could see it Thank coming. Thank you, brother. I can I see really it mean that. We, we, Sophia and I feel the same way about Aurora. Like, we're just like in awe of how blessed we are to have her. You could just tell. You, you know, you and I, uh, I'm going to let everybody know. David and I uh, were talking the other day. 
it, we weren't talking about UFOs or astrology. <laughs> we were <laughs> we were talking about being dads. And yep. uh, what a great conversation that is. And and so I'm just going to tell everybody what I told you. Dude, she's beautiful. And you've got 18 years of challenges in front of you. Man. <laughs> and that's, and see, the thing is, the thing is, you know, I've got two daughters, right? And, uh, and, and dads are suckers <laughs> with their daughters. Now, you know, I, I didn't have sons, right? So I can't really say, but I know my experience and you can't say no. You can't. It, you, you try. <laughs> yeah, Sir yeah. Pops a lot's going to be popping all the time. Like, okay, no problem. Pop, what do you need? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. When Nicole was born, uh, I'll share this with you. You're going to laugh. So she is, I'm talking about 30 seconds out of the oven, right? <laughs> and I'm holding her. And, and I whisper in her ear, I go, you can have whatever you want right and i and this nurse behind me goes oh that was so beautiful right? and, and, and you know and she understood man she understood she understood and that's it's, it's just a wonderful thing man so you've been blessed she is beautiful man just absolutely beautiful so well, imagine being an astrologer and as she's still in the oven and her head's coming out i'm watching her head come out my other eye is on the clock. <laughs> and so I was the loudest person in the whole entire room when I was like, 10, 15, boom. And I couldn't believe it was like a moment where I'm like, it's really just 10, 15, exactly. Okay, there it is, bang. And then the nurse was like, it's, it's on there, 10, 15. I'm like, there we go. The astrologer yeah. was able to scream, 10, 15. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, have you plotted out everything you might I, you know what of it's course kind of a pointless question isn't it i mean I, you know no i don't think it's a pointless question but yeah i mean we were already close to the date she was born five, six six days after her due date so i was actually not expecting her to be a double leo like me i was like oh my gosh of course I was actually like not expecting that, but it was great because it was on a new moon. It's beautiful. And I, of course it's all plotted out. Like that's been right away being done. It's already all figured out. <laughs> I, I love that, man. I absolutely love that. Well, happy Halloween. Happy and, Halloween. Yeah. And uh, starting next year, see, so a year from now, Aurora should be walking. Right. And you're yep. going to be, dude, you're going to be doing the Halloween costume. You're going to, and, and that's it. The journey starts and it's going to be a whole different thing uh, from there on out. Um, I mean, she's going to be at stairway to the stars. So we're, we start, we started early with her on everything. She was on the beach her first week. She's already involved in life. She's super chill. You, you're going to get to hang out with her. She's already I, talking. I ask her spiritual questions. Yeah. I'm trying to be like John D in the now and already talking to her. Like, what, what were they saying before you got here? You know, it's funny. And that she's already like, Ooh, ah, and like, she'll actually know I'm saying something like that. I know people might think I'm crazy, but I'm seeing it on TikTok. There's these young children coming in that two three years old they're not just talking like oh mommy daddy they're like straight up this is what this is this is what god is this is how it comes to the sun this is how i'm like what the you know crystal grids to you name it the generation that's coming in right now makes us i, I think of myself at five years old i i just figured out glue sticks and that was like the biggest accomplishment these kids at three years old are already quantum and make a quantum computer system look boring and not that great there is can we stop right there for a second i i feel that and i don't want to sound like a crazy person i i i, I don't but i think that dna has been altered 
Okay, I do. I do. I think that the 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 generations like my daughters, they're 28 years old. They were just like what you're saying when they were three years old. And I was like, man, I was making mud pies. Right. I was, you know, you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, you were in the dirt with the hose. And that was, you know, that that was advanced. Yeah. And, and, and I'm looking and, and, and the, the, the kids these days, I think uh, the DNA has, has been altered. And a lot of things could have caused that. Um, it, it's the progression and it's evolution and everything. But I am saying this like oh, oh, like fact, like something has been altered. The kids now are walking computers. They are just smart. Or well, else. if you were to look at it astrologically, the Pluto transit since... If you go back to, let's say, Pluto, Libra, 1972, that has been the fastest Pluto up until we got to the 2000s we've ever seen. Pluto going around and through the zodiac, astrologically, the tropical zodiac, faster. Because now we're seeing Pluto slow down, which that is weird because if you think back, you would not know anybody alive today that's been through Pluto's slower transit through signs. And that's why it's feeling so edgy too, is we're, we're getting used to how long Pluto is going to take to go through each sign now. 20 years in Aquarius. We're so used to 11, 12, you know, 14. Now it was 16 through Capricorn we're finishing and then 20 through Aquarius. So it's slowing down. So that evolution of planets of, of Pluto represents that the evolution reached its peak. The last time he saw this was the Revolutionary War. Like Washington was a Pluto Libra. Like you're a Pluto Virgo. I'm a Pluto Libra. You got to think like Benjamin Franklin, he was a Pluto and in, in Leo. So that's the generation right now that's starting to retire and, and turning 65 and so forth. The last time that we could have all had the same generational planet of Pluto was the Revolutionary War times. I was, uh, uh, I just got back from Egypt and, you know, speaking of the Zodiac, right. Where, you know, at Dendera and there's a couple other spots, uh, too, in Egypt, um, where the original Zodiac that was there was, I, I think it was stolen by the French and, you know, so somebody pulled it out of the ceiling, the British, and uh, it's it's in it's either at the British Museum or it's at the Louvre. Uh, I don't know where it's at now. And um, whoever stole it uh, did the courtesy of making a cast of it and making mm-hmm. a copy and giving it back to the Egyptians. And that's what's in the ceiling now is a copy of the original. But anyway, um, when you stand underneath that and you look at it, there are. I, d- Look, I, I know what I'm expecting to see, and I see it. I see a zodiac there, um, and it looks like a modern right interpretation of the zodiac. It's not your imagination. There are others that will say, "Eh, not so fast," but I'm, I'm no, I'm, I'm convinced that that's exactly what that was. But when you think about that, that's four thousand years ago, and that's a that's a long spans of time and then you take this back to go beckley tepe where on pillar 43 clearly those are zodiac symbols that are on that pillar what and they're not indigenous animals of of the desert right no. <laughs> the, it's, it's uh, clearly what that is um do you think that the identification of those constellations um and uh, aside from like Aries, right, or the belt of Orion, where you know and that's a bow and arrow, and and, and th- but the rest of it is is well. Wait a minute. Now I guess you got the scales with Libra, but mm-hmm. but uh, but everything has got. I don't see. I see animals now, and I see animals when you point at you know when you're in my backyard, you go that's th- this is what's going on, and you explain it to. Me. But that's fine. That's us today. How did the ancients see this and identify this across continents, across cultures before telephones? I, I mean, that know? was the telephone, the sky. And right. so in Babylon, Mesopotamia, 
the information traveled though to everywhere around. So, you know, Egypt picked up on what was happening in Mesopotamia. And then of course, you see people over time when Egypt's coming to its end, Greeks, Romans, the Arab nations, like they've all carried all the, every civilization has carried astrology, peaked out, held it and moved it to the next. Right. So, but, so it's like one of those things to where they're all looking at it. I would say it's the Indian astrology that really is the one where you don't see a lot of mixture with what you see up in the Northern hemisphere as much, but they come to so many of similar understandings that's that's the that's where i would say you would see the huh how did they how did they figure that out in india and they have it their own way and they focus more on the chakras and the breaking down of 13 degrees of, of the where the the stars are of course they don't look at it as tropical astrology some do but they use the side reel and they put the stars as the backdrop in 13 sections and then they put the zodiac right and that zodiac changing with the procession of equinox but in India, you still find that planets rule signs. In Western, planets rule signs, meaning that it's not so much, well, this is how the constellation looks. It's a, more of a coincidence that the planets that rule the signs. So if Venus rules Libra, it's like if you look at Venus in the sky and how bright it is, but also in that it disappears and that it is balanced as the morning and the evening star. Every nine months, we see the transition, right? And every 18 months, we see Venus past the Earth. It's balanced perfect. That's why Libra's the balance. Now, more than well, it looks like it, that happens to be more of the irony or what was maybe seen in the understandings of what the planets were doing, because the planets rule the signs. It's not the other way around. Well, okay, and uh, that that that's fine, but Gobekli Tepe is seven thousand years older. Mm -hmm. Seven thousand years, man. Seven that so it seems to me that either somebody taught them the meanings and 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 what the constellations look like, you know, and another advanced civilization that that predated everything. And that's a possibility, right? That, you know, everything is taught and handed down. Or they were seeing things the same way. And maybe a third possibility is that those astrologers at Gobekli Tepe, and that was an astronomical site for sure. I mean, it was com it's right. completely blind. They taught those around them and then handed it down. But when you add that 7,000-year gap in, that's when I really go, huh? You know, it just doesn't make any sense. Or, I mean, you could look at it like people talk about star seeds today. If you look at like Mayan culture, like they look at it in their prophecy systems that if you were to go back to about 4,000 years ago, that they look at it as that there are stars that came down here and that were seeded as far as consciousness that then we've been seeing in the evolution then of course 2012 and going into their baktun cycles and their katun cycles that you would see that it was seeded down here from the divine from the stars that something came down here and seeded the info why so when people say they're a star seed i always think it's interesting i'm like well where, what have you grown into <laughs> you know because <laughs> that's the interesting part is like, okay, what did you grow into? Cause it's like, that's, it's like the long thousands and thousands and thousands of years of how long it takes to grow the conscious energies into the space we're in now. But it definitely, and even in Egypt or even in Mayan culture, you see whether it's ships or there's some sort of figures that are coming down or to use Halloween, for example, it was a thousand years ago. This is Hollow's Eve. This is the cross quarter days. When we have the fixed points that understand where the seasons are, there are these cross quarter days that happen in these fixed signs. And what's interesting is the Pallades cluster is always sitting back in the old days. And it still is today, although it's moved with the procession of November 21st at the mid heaven point, the Northern where the Zenith would be the top of where we see in the sky is the Pallades cluster. And so we know where, that, that they knew that they were in the dark times because the Pallades clusters, the seven sisters, 
of course, if all the star seeds out there are going, oh my God, those are my brothers and sisters. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But that was that on, that there was a celebration that you lit fires, and that, that there were festivals that were held on the four cross quarter days around the year. And so these are this is the fourth and the last one. So it's a it's also Scorpio. So it's a regen regenerative survival time, and and it was understanding just knowing what you're aiming at and where you knew now of course it's november 21st when we're directly in opposition and that would be at exact midheaven but you can go out right now and we just saw the lunar eclipse where you see jupiter you can be out at midnight and you'll see jupiter right up top and you'll see the Pleiades cluster right there yeah 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 i can't it's gotten to the point now where um and i thought that i had a grip on this you know 20 30 years ago i didn't um, now I go outside and I look at the night sky completely differently because I know where everything is at. Um, like, okay, I, I've had this house for three years, so I've seen the cycles go by now for three years. And I, I got so, so it was, it was about, you know, exactly. It's about a month and a half ago. I walked out in the backyard and finally Orion's belt is back. Right, mm -hmm. and it's coming up, and it was like my friend is back. I missed you so much, and 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 now I I see the sky differently, and I see how everything rotates and and comes through. It's a it's an unbelievable experience to understand what's really going on out there with the universe and our particular star system, the Milky Way, and what's going on around us. And well, and you were in Egypt recently. Yes. So you were watching it come up there too. I, I want you know and see which that's where that's where you see them taking pyramids and pointing towards that. But you would have to have been aware of that at this time of year and the in the fall into the winter cycle. I I was out there. I I, I I'm sure that you saw the videos. Um, I I did a live stream too. I watched, I was in between the Sphinx pause and watched the sunrise right in front of me, man. And dude, dude, it doesn't get any more epic than that. And that thing is straight aligned, straight aligned, straight aligned. That, that's not an accident. <laughs> that is no. not an accident. And, and when you, when you, when you do that, it was very spiritual, by the way, it was very moving because you can feel the intention of, of everything. And, um, but, but when you think about that and you roll back the clock, uh, to 10,500 BC, that was Leo rising, dude. Right. That's, Which that's crazy. If you think of the Egyptians, though, they're the ones that really brought us the understanding of the ascendant, Horus rising, the hour, the understanding of the horizon, Horus's zone, and the sunrise, which the sun is the ruler of Leo, not the other way around, right? So that's the interesting part is like, especially if you were there in July and August, to see the sunrise would be the true sunrise of the horizon that's the, been being ruled by the sun. That's truly its rise. And that's the peak of summer, the fixed. And so that's another quarter time. And that's another time where when these cross quarter days, that is a celebration, the third celebration of the four in-betweens of the seasons. Uh, yeah, the let's, fixed yeah, let's, uh, okay, so let's stay right there for a second. I know it's Halloween. We'll talk about Halloween, everybody. Oh, by the way, so I'm pouring my coffee uh, coming out to start the show with you. And I'm pouring my coffee and right into my forehead goes John D. And I was like, wow, that, that came out of nowhere. So I come in and sit down. And, and the first thing you say is you're teaching Aurora. You're speaking to her in John D. I was like, I can't believe that. That was like 60 seconds ago. John D in the head. Um, and when we look at the work of Robert Baval mm. and Orion's belt over Giza and the alignment of the pyramids, and it's a fantastic book and it's a, a heck of a, a lot of research went into that. But when we roll back with the procession and the tilt and where the stars were at 10,500 BC, where I'm at in, in Los Angeles with you, 
right now, Orion's belt is off a little south, right? Mm-hmm. It's up here. Um, but uh, and it's doing the same thing in Egypt. I saw it in Egypt, and it's not. It's missing the Giza Plateau. You know what I mean? So if you're standing in the Giza Plateau and I watch it, you know, it's over here. It's not a lot. But 10,500 B.C., you would have looked straight up and Orion's belt is, you know what I mean? At at one point in the night sky is going to be directly above those three pyramids. Not a coincidence, is it? No, I mean, that's a thousand years ago. Halloween would have been direct opposition. But we have to remember that the fixed stars, like let's take, for example, the Pleiades cluster, which is a cluster of seven stars, or Regulus, or Antares, or Aldebaran, they move too. So it takes 72 years for Regulus to move one degree. So we saw it leave Leo in 2012, which meant that if you take 30 degrees times 12 or 72 all those thousands of years of royalty and monarchies 2012 has been the beginning and the end of that where it's about service and help and being of the people being we don't need a monarch so much and i it's so it's like making you really think like sure there's procession but also stars are progressing too in our literal movement and how we're tracking them and so there's the understanding of a constant, which is tropical zodiac, which is on a map, the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn, because the sun doesn't matter what's happening. It's still going to be equal day and equal night on the equinoxes and still going to be the peak of summer or the peak of the beginning of winter and the solstices. So there's something about the way that our earth and the sun's relationship doesn't change. But there's something else about everything else around it that does. It's kind of like you driving the car doesn't change. But the road and all the people around it that are in the same way with you, they might change lanes a little bit, but they might come back. It's like a pack of people. Not everybody's going to be in their position. It's how you see it, though. And that's where people get kind of messed up. Like right now, I see all over TikTok, everybody saying the sun has not moved out of Virgo because they're looking at some app, which they don't realize, number one, in the app, it's not like the app's tracking the planets when you go up. It's preset with math because the planets are preset. Obviously, it was a glitch. If they were to go up in the morning right now, right before the sun comes up, Venus is the morning star. Oh, you could see right there. You could see, oh, there's Regulus. Okay, so it's obviously, all right. And then the sun will come up hours later. And then, oh, yeah. So the sun, if you look at it right now, we're in Scorpio and Tropical. We're in Libra and Sidereal. It's pretty easy to see. But because their little stupid app, like the little Skywatch app has had a glitch, because they actually think it's like looking at the planets. It's all preset. As a programmer, you just preset as an astrologer. You know the planets are going to be exactly where they're at, where the eclipses are and so forth. So people are freaking out, thinking that the sun stopped. That's why all the crazy stuff's happening. I was just like, oh, my gosh. And we were just saying that the kids today are smarter. And <laughs> <laughs> right? And and why uh, why is that where... We, and that includes you and your GPS and your navigation system in your car. Don't tell me you don't use it because you do. And we, we, we are dependent now. I, you know, okay. I remember, I remember two phone numbers. I remember my phone number in high school in Panama. Okay. 823626. We had a six digit number. There was, you know, 10,000 people on that island, you know, mm. we're not that big of a deal. 823626. Mm. And then my phone number that I had in the valley, I'm not going to say it because I still use that number. Uh, uh, but I, and I remember that everything else, I don't, I, and we used to remember phone numbers. Our phone numbers were here. You remember, you could write out everybody's right. names in a phone book. And write out their phone number. You didn't know why you were doing it, just in case you forgot it. So you right. would, you know, write it down. That's not Rolodex that kind of- was huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's all gone now because we know that we don't have to do that. We've got this. We don't need directions anymore. We've got this. We don't right. need to clip coupons out of the newspaper. We've or whatever, you know, everything right. is here. Um, so there's a part of our children and us 
that has gotten smarter, but our brain isn't getting exercised to right. the point where we think that the sun isn't coming up because we're depending on this. That's kinda, what's scary. That that that's what actually scared me was the idea that they couldn't just go outside at dawn right before the sun came up and we're like, okay, there's Venus and be able to see the the fixed star Regulus, be able to see you don't even have to know all the constellations. Just knowing some of these fixed stars will let you know where you're at. And then be like, well, the sun's obviously in front of that because now it's rising. Hours, okay, how many hours on the horizon? Okay, boom, there it is. So did the sun stop moving? No, it did not in our view. It's pretty easy if you understand the sunrise, like just looking at the sunrise. Now I, they're I, looking at an app and they're all over and they're like, it, there's a conspiracy happening right now. And I'm like, is go there look one? up. That movie was out. Go look up. It's like the people who didn't want to see that there was a comet coming. That's exactly it. That's exactly what it is. It's don't look up, but for real. And, and don't look up, by the way, is a documentary disguised as a comedy. And, True. and the earth thing. it's a frigging documentary. And you know, who, I thought it was great. I thought it was a great movie. I, I, I laughed really well. It was, it, it was, it, it was really potent. It was really potent. Soundtrack was great. Uh, uh, Jennifer Lawrence. I, I look at her, uh, her new movie that just came out. She's the 32 year old. She gets hired by this family to date their son. That's going to Harvard. Mm. They need blossom. Go see it. I forget what it's called. <laughs> Jennifer Lords is the anyway, uh back to, back to that though. Um with um uh the depending on apps and depending on cell phones and this uh, other conversion that is going on, how do we how do we break away from that? Is there a is there anything in the stars that says that this is just evolution? And we're going to get past this part, but we need to go through this learning curve that we're in right now. The, the, the adaptation of this and social media and, and its influences on us and how we evolve as a species past it. Yeah, and I was going to answer that with a joke, like, but that was a serious joke. Like, well, at Stairways to the Stars next weekend, I mean, we're going star watching at Area 51. Uh, to, to help teach people this stuff and there's so many other events happening there but i think where we're really at astrologically is yes unfortunately the finding in the roots of who we are is we t uh, my last time i was on with you i said this is going to be about human origins where pluto's moving into aquarius where right now we have been through so many let's call them portals of the old astrologers back in, let's say, 1345 that predicted the Black Plague were conjunctionalist astrologers, meaning if they saw Jupiter and Saturn together, which we had in 2020, it was on the news. Uh-oh. And that was the same one that they said, uh-oh, about that the news referred to. Well, like 800 years ago, we haven't seen Jupiter and Saturn, right? And it's like, yeah, yeah I remember that. You didn't want to bring that up in the middle of 2020. And then they saw oh my gosh, all these big planetary conjunctions happening back to back to back. Well, nothing like we've seen since 2020, and we're not out of it. We have Jupiter, Uranus, you can see, that are coming together in 2024. And then, of course, Saturn and Neptune, which that was in the 1989, 1990, 1988, right in there was the last time we had Saturn and Neptune come together. So we're having it all back to back. We had Jupiter-Pluto, we had Jupiter-Saturn, we had Saturn-Pluto, we had so many that just keep happening. Jupiter, Neptune. Now we're in the last couple of years here of this massive, just nonstop being hit by massive conjunctions. And so it's coming to human origins one. And I thought what was really weird was one, one thing. If you look at what happened in Egypt, they just discovered another tomb and they finally found some of the original scrolls of the book of the dead that they have not released yet. This was like two days ago. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. 43 yeah. feet, 49 feet long. This is going to be the first one that's like truly clear and has all the info, but they won't release and say what's in it. And I thought it was ironic because it was in Egypt right next to where there's a war going on right now. 
And it's like, yeah, what's gonna, what, what everybody's looking for, what's going to solve the problems. It's like, well, what if we, what, if, what's going to happen when humans, the collective starts to find out information that would tear the reasons why people are fighting. Like it would just rip those whole excuses or identities all gone. Well, see, it, 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 so that's, people, that, that's like the miracle to me is like discovering right. the stuff that we have to discover. Right. And, and the, uh, I was in Egypt when the war broke out, I got there on the second. I know I was thinking about you big time. It's crazy. The war broke out on the seventh, uh, just a hundred miles away, you know, and it was a, it was a eerie, you can just imagine the, the feeling it was, it was, it was, it was crazy uh, i'll leave that right there but there's there's another way to discuss this because i was going around in my you know i had to be i couldn't be jimmy church the loud if the war hadn't have broken out i would have been the loud guy that i am right okay but but it was a different atmosphere but i was everybody was talking about it and i'm talking about people on the streets the egyptians not you know, and 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 I could hear the conversations going on. They wouldn't. They, you know, you can't talk to. I don't have what. What could I? What could anybody from the West contribute to that conversation? Correct. We can't. We can't. We can't. This is something that is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand years old. This is not. And we think in the West that there is just some geopolitical solution and we could just work this out today and 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 peel the band-aid off and everything is fixed. No, this is this is old. This is old. And and that, there isn't a better way. <laughs> if you really want to, you know, really complicate things, take this thing back to Jesus and Ramses. It's in the Bible. Let my people go. Right. <laughs> Think about how many thousands of years ago that was. So, no, this isn't just something that can be fixed overnight. But I was listening uh, to uh, uh, different people talk about it over there. And that's that's the way they explained it to me, David. You guys don't understand. Well, this and is- I think if you look back. So the, October 7th was very eerie because that was the day Venus got out of its shadow. It had just retrograded in Leo. We hadn't seen a Venus retrograde in Leo since the 18, like 40s. And then wow. it just always has been in Virgo back into Leo. But finally, every eight years, we see a Venus retrograde in the same area. It finally was like, I'm doing this in Leo, exactly at the place where the total solar eclipse that went through America in 2017 was 28 Leo. What's really weird about it was when you look at the history of Venus retrogrades in Leo, you get to the war of 1812 invasion. All I got by doing the history was invasions. Everywhere I went, I was like, "Uh uh-oh, invasion. I went all the way back to 541 during the Justin teen times and the Justin teen plague. And then when Rome was trying to hold on to itself and the Justin Empire and all this stuff. It's like Justinian Emperor. All of it was invasions. All of it was like, oh my gosh. And the morning, that morning, Venus came out of its shadow was right when it happened. Exactly. Wow. wow. Right? And I was wow. like, oh gosh. Or the last time that it had retrograded in Leo at the beginning of a phase that we call it in astrology was 1772. And that's when Sam Adams, as a court clerk, started to start the first ideas of holding meetings for a new continental Congress. Can I ask you, um, I I don't want you to offend anybody. Let's just talk about facts here. When you say that, you know, it's popping up on TikTok, right? And everybody's, (laughs) there's no sun. And, And this is popping up. Was there, was there a typical, was there, a sign, you know, I don't know, Virgo, whatever. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a Libra and I'm checking today and there's no, you know, was there one sign that was freaking out more than another? During the last month or something? 
Yeah, when when the app said that the sun wasn't coming. Oh, up. I mean, I don't know. I I don't know who what their signs were, but I, you know, as an astrologer, everybody's sending me this as if it's something I need to pay attention to, as if it's true. I just and wanted automatically to it was so easy to just be like, well, I just was watching the the sunrise this morning, and that's not true, right? Is there like, one sign that is conspiratorial? <laughs> I'd say all signs are equal, right? Okay, that can be. You? Are you going to be are you going to be political about that? No, I mean honestly, like I've met all 12 signs and it's hard to gauge who's more conspiratorial than the other, right? It depends on their own planets and their chart too, right? Like but I would say people with more heavy Scorpio stuff do more of the digging but are willing to dig in before is this really what it is? Or as some people just kind of want to like, oh, this that's a cool idea, like let's run with it. Which is more oh. sage. Okay, 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 I mean, which is more sad. <laughs> That's where I was going. So um, I, I popped up a, a quick poll. And before we get to this poll, um, uh, we're going to get an average here. Are signs, are birth dates equally dispersed throughout the year? You know what I mean? So every zodiac sign, is there an equal number or is there one that has more? And I would think that there would have to be because people are making love in winter, right? So you go nine months later and it seems like there's probably more birthdays in September and October because people are shacked up in, in winter. Yeah, or they have the idea of setting a New Year's resolution of having a baby. Uh, that could be. Oh, it's, see, that, that's a. I, I would have never thought about that. I, I'm right. more of a self-minded guy. I'm thinking, <laughs> and it's more planned out. Capricorn is nine Capricorns around New Year's Eve, right? So it's like, oh yeah, let's plan this one out. Right, right. Okay. Uh, the, the numbers vary because you know you have to find which country and which data. And some countries don't have the data. They don't record birth certificates the way we do in the West. So I, I would say. You could look at it like it's more about I don't care what somebody's son is. It's like the 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 woman uh, who did the axe murders in 1892 who got away with it. I just did it with um, the historian Lindsay Borden. Lindsay Borden. Lindsay Borden. Yeah, if you look Lindsay. at her chart, she's born July. I think it was 18th, 1860. She was born on a solar eclipse with Mars retrograde and Venus retrograde, with the sun on top of Venus retrograde in a Kazemi, exactly when the only time that the sun can oppose Mars is during a Mars retrograde, which is every two years. And of course, not in the same place. But Venus and Mars to be retrograde is something that Nostradamus points out in his prophecies work as a secret code to understand how he does his work is like, this is a rare bad moment. So I looking at her chart, it's more of like, how rare could it be? I was, I didn't know anything about her. And last night I did a show with uh, Dr. Ann Wolke. She's a historian at Cal Poly, Poly Pomona that's on High Vibe. And literally I was like, she's incest. I bet you there was an incest relationship going on. And looking into it, we found out way deep there was incest. Then her dad was part of the Knights of uh, Pythion, like part of like in the Masons and, and then the architect. And it was all like about the hatchet and all of those Knights of Pythion. So it was like totally looking at it all differently. So when I look at somebody's birth, there is no equal distribution because everybody is different. Somebody like her is out of a, let's just say a two-year period, uh, the biggest anomaly. And out of that two-year period, I'd put in like a 30-year period that like somebody born on those days, very handful of people and the weirdest right. thing. Right, 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 right. So and, it's, yeah. it's like, it's not so much like, oh, well, okay, everybody's a Leo or everybody's this or that. Like everybody has... If you're born like my my daughter, she's born in a Venus retrograde in Leo that started in Leo, meaning the last time that there could have been a new moon Leo Venus retrograde baby would have been back from 1772 through the 1840s. And it would so only be within the eight years from 1772 through the 1840s, just the eight year jumps and within a 40 day period. So you did plan it. We did plan it. Yeah, we did. Ironically, it was Halloween when we told everybody we're going to have a baby. We're going to go for it. I remember that. I remember that. Okay, so here's the poll. 
I said, okay, what's everybody signed? So let's just go through this. Um, Aries, Capricorn, Leo, 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 uh, uh, Libra, Scor- uh, Taurus, Scorpio, Cancer, Cancer. Oh, two Cancers in a row. Libra. Oh, check this one out. Libra, same birthday as you, Jimmy. Wow. That's cool. That's pretty cool. Taurus, Scorpio. Ba, 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 ba. Somebody says they're Taylor Swift. What's Taylor Swift sign? I think she's an Aquarius. Aquarius. Uh, let's see. Cancer Sun, Aries Moon, Leo, and Mercury. Man, how do people know all of this? That's crazy. We talked about that way too much. The Ram, Sagittarius, um, Taurus. So see, it's it's like everybody's every tribe showing up. Yeah, some pretty- take a minute to put it out. Some might be like, I don't know if I should put it out. Okay. Leo's, did you notice we're all like, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Aries, Aries, I'm here. And that's because they're fire signs and the sun is at their exaltation in, in Aries and it's at home in Leo. So those are going to express itself so easy. Yeah, it seems like uh, uh, as I'm scrolling through here, I see. I do see a lot of Leos. I do see there's a there's a mix of everything, but uh, lots of Leos. I, and, and I wonder, is that because, do you have more Leo followers because you're the Leo king? Yeah, probably. No, uh, I did a bunch, back when you could advertise on Facebook, you know, you can't advertise Facebook, Meta, Instagram, TikTok, astrology anymore. Is that right? Can't it. Nope, they got rid of that two years ago. So in my prior data, it was like weird. It was like Capricorns, Virgos were like my biggest advertising like clicks. What, how, how do you circumvent that? I was you able to lot. work with the company when I had my first app that we were able to get Mark Zuckerberg on the phone and have him change it to where we were able to use targeting birthdays and know the people's birthdays off Facebook before the election stuff of 2016. Yeah, that sucks. that's how you do it. That's gangster stuff. Yeah, that's that's way gangster. Get Zuck on the phone. Like, um, and just be like, yep, let us do ads based off targeting birthdays between these birthdays. Okay. Here, I, I've got I've got his account changed. <laughs> it was that crazy bro i was like i was like man but it was weird because it was like you would think that but no like leo's kind of like check in but they don't no it's always like virgos i would say virgos and i bet you every astrologer would say yeah i have a lot of virgos virgos want the most readings they want to understand what's happening there it's like a clean house right like i want to What's the best product? What's the best stars happening in my life? What's the they, like Virgos just have to know the critical little details of every bit of life. They don't want the stress. It, Even wait, though the reading's stressful to get to there for them. And then the reading can be stressful because it's like, I didn't want to know that. You know, they're still coming in. Virgo, Cancer, and uh Leo's son, conjunction, c- conjunct Uran- Uranus. Mm. Uh uh, they're still that means coming. they're older. It's like so, know? when somebody gives me something like that, it's like, oh, you want us and Leo, right? That like that's like the fifties into the sixties. Like you know what I mean? Like it's easy to know they're born when they're born. Here's Pluto, Leo. Right, so they're older. Is that, is that right? Yeah, that Pluto ended its transit in Leo in 57. So it's all the, the 50s, all into the 40s. And when we dropped the atomic bomb and during World War II, when America entered with Pluto and Leo at zero degrees back in the beginning of the 40s. So you have to remember that like from 1940 all the way to 50, 1957, this Pluto Leo, I know they're born in that time. Now, what am I? You're Pluto Virgo. So I'm Pluto Virgo? No, I'm mm-hmm. Libra. You're a Libra son, yeah. Yeah, okay. Quit confusing me, David. Okay, what am I? So I'm Pluto Virgo? 
Yep. Is that is that? Tell me that's good. <laughs> I mean, I it, it's just. I mean, look at what you do. You're a radio host, Virgo. What's the planet that rules it? Mercury. So you love to go deep into understanding the critical details. You're what? You're born what? Like are you? You? I know your age, so. It's like you're born when the planet Pluto and Uranus were coming together. And what happened when you were born? The protest in America, the revolution, Timothy Leary, the freedom to express and get rid of the whiskey drinking. If I use Timothy Leary as a good example, the whiskey drinking people over 40 who like to put people in prisons and use metals and bars and guns that keep people away from expressing themselves and finding out who they are. So that's and that's what within I, you to break through and find the information about the reality that's not good for humans that you want to do your your commitment to service is everything above all because Pluto's right. where we will commit everything we have in our life to right 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 and, and our and our and what your evolutionary placement and part of the generation you're at so everybody that you know all when things happen in the world and stuff, where can I participate? Where can I help? Where, where can I better myself to be part of this too? So I think Pluto and Virgo is a great position. Plus a lot of all the Pluto Virgos have Uranus there. So it makes you guys feel like you're this, we'll call it a spiritual silo instead of a nuclear silo. And that you've been waiting for it to just fully just to get out there and help. And yeah. you guys were all born with Saturn in opposition to, it waiting for this like divine timing for the big huge amount of energy that you have for the world and that's what the last couple of years has been is finally the cap feels like it's being taken off that's always been there uh, okay okay i want the audience to to hear me for a second and and listen to my words david can confirm everything that i'm about to say because him and I have had these conversations many, many times. When I am on the phone with somebody that is pitching an idea, which is five times a day, right? Okay. And somebody, and they will always focus on money. And I will stop them and say, it's not about that, it's about the community. How can we help the community? How can we put this together to help the community? How many times have you and I had that conversation, David? Right? Oh, right, right. A yeah. ton. Countless. And and that surprises the the people that I'm talking to. Now, I will tell them if we if we do this for the community and we do this right and we lay this out right, we don't have to worry about the money. Right. Money just, that's, that's something that's that's a byproduct of this. But you don't make it about the money and then the community is second that you're going to do this. No. And I'm talking about it doesn't. It, well, it and it's be, so limiting to the power of the community because the community power is priceless. That's it. Like, you know, so so when, you're, when you're capping it as like, oh, I want to make it about the money, you're taking humanity and putting it at that level, really? You think it's worth that many thousands of dollars or whatever it might be? Like, what? That's exactly my point. And, and I have always... Now, I'm not saying that I don't like nice things. Obviously, I do. Right? Right. <laughs> right? But, but this came because it was a byproduct. You know, I didn't, you know, my goal. Service uh, first, everything. Service and that's where Pluto returns rewards, right? Pluto's where we receive. So if it's in Virgo, if you're doing the service, you'll be well received in weird ways. Because with Uranus there, it's like, well, you've also met tons of people through the service that help to where it's like, did you really buy every guitar at the normal price? So actually, it helps you in the long run in every way, the service. Because it's not like, oh... Yeah, I knew I met this person and I could buy that guitar. And oh, I understand that. Or right, right. So people don't see that doing the service actually and, and mixing with the community offers a more incentives of help. It's a win, win, win all, all across the board. It's a win, win, win. And if you go, 
Um, at, you know, if you take a look at Stairway to the Stars and you go and look at Disclosure Fest and you look at the foundation, uh, Stairway to the Stars wasn't done for some profit thing. It's not. Mm-mm. It's for the foundation. We're going to be out there feeding the homeless in Las Vegas. Yeah. You know, we're planting trees in, in Los Angeles and cleaning beaches. And that's where that money goes. Right. You know, and, 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 and that, now I'm not saying we don't get to have a great weekend at the Luxor. And we, you know, we get to hang out and all, you know, the community is there and look, you know, yeah, of course, of course. But it's about the community first. That That's the idea behind it. It's not like. Uh, oh man, let's let's do the biggest best conference ever. No, that's not what that's not what this was about. You know, Adrian was called to Vegas. Yeah, and, and, to, and because there's a pyramid there, and there's a pyramid. That's there. why it's at the Luxor, and to regrid and use that energy to get yes. out to the world in these times. All, all of that, all of that, you know. And now, uh, are there a couple of side benefits for it? Yeah, I get to hang out with the Leo King, you know, and 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 we get to get the community together, and we get to share knowledge, and and we get to hang out on the strip together as a community. Oh man, that's beautiful! Right, that's it's that's wonderful. that's a new thing, too. That's like a <laughs> new like Area Fifty One. I mean, like yes. the more the and then what happens in those? Those are the experiences that create the changes that need to happen in the world, which the universe then supplies whatever is needed. There's no, what does it need to be? It's more whatever it is in the moment that the magic is going to make. You know, you have to look at it like that event and whatever the spiritual work is first is what then creates the things that are worth using whatever the resources that are needed to, to go create. If it's in that alignment, we're in a time now where everybody's worried about money they have to ask themselves with these, this astrology for the rest of their lives going forward because it's all changing, just like when Rome fell or whatever. I'm not saying America is going to fall, but it's the ideas, even with the Revolutionary War, it was like, okay, that continental money wasn't worth crap. So you had to be really with Washington and really with the Continental Congress because you cared about the cause, right? They, they, were, they were fighting with money that was worthless, right? And, so it's and- always, and then we're at that time to where it's like, The cause, whatever you are doing to help, whatever is needed in your life to make it through is going to be provided because that stairway literally will then reveal itself. But you can't get there unless you actually get there with your commitment to your service. And that's the reason why the Star Regulus moved into Virgo in 2012. And it's there for so more than we could even possibly fathom 72 years times 30 degrees so just do that math and you'll be like dang okay the next thousand <laughs> years is 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 service oriented work it's service oriented work and the the uh the for, i mean for me like the crazy part is I step back and 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 listen to everybody talk about the crazy world that we live in today and they they have forgotten what the Vietnam War was like, or the 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 protests that went down in the 1960s in the United States. That was crazy. They forgot about the Cuban Missile Crisis. Right. I didn't even mention World War One or World War Two. I know. Just last month, all of this. So yeah, is the world in flux right now? I think it's always in flux. But here's my answer to that. It's all a part of the journey. 100%. All of it. it. We change one thing in the past. We change one thing. One thing in your life, David. One thing in the first grade. And then you're you're not married to Sophia. Right. (laughs) Right? That's 100% right. 100%. I, I feel like when people are in these moments... I'm glad that you bring up all that history because as astrology, that's what we do. It's like the only way we get the information of what's going to happen, what the horoscope is going to be, is based upon, well, what happened every time that this occurrence and reoccurrence has happened in history? And sometimes there's short waves where it's like, oh, okay, these transits have happened constantly. 
That's why I don't trip out over Mercury retrogrades. It happens three or four times a year. Like it's like the Mercury goes around the sun every 88 days. So it, it, it says hi to all the planets every 88 days. Hi, 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 hi. You know? So it's like, I don't trip on those things, but when it's like, Oh, okay. Every transit from since 2020 to now through 2026 is the most rarest conjunctions of big planets making their conjunction. It just so happens to be in a synchronistic order from 2020 to 2021 to 2022 to 2023, 2024, 2025. And in 2026, it's like, whoa, it starts to open out of this. Is, Mer is Mercury retrograde a crutch? 100%. Right. Yeah, it's it, a crutch. It is, it's, it's, it's a crutch hard. for people who want to, you know, as my dad says, my dad was a, a, a hilarious guy, Aquarius. He'd always be like, I love that you're into astrology. He loved, and he didn't get all of it, but he just supported me. He's like, it's such a great example. Like these people use this full moon or Mercury retrograde. It's such a good excuse to get out of the bullshit that they're doing in their life. And I'm like, that's exactly what it is. They use, oh, well, it's Mercury retrograde. So you know what? I can't do anything right now. I can't go outside. Like what? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh man, the milk is bad. Mercury retrograde. No, no. <laughs> it's like wait a minute. Go to the store and get some milk. I'm not you gonna can't. poop because it's Mercury retrograde. Like, okay, purple face. Good yeah. luck with that. <laughs> Let's, take our break. <laughs> Let's take our break right here. Our guest tonight, the one, the only, David, the Leo King Palmer is with us. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back after this sh short message. Stay with us. This is Jimmy Church of Fade to Black. Please visit all of our sponsors. We're taking a quick break here. All of the links are below. And we'll be right back. Join us November 10th, 11th, and 12th, 2023, live at the Luxor Hotel and Casino on the Las Vegas Strip. As Disclosure Fest Foundation and Fade to Black Radio presents Stairway to the Stars, a human origins science and technology expo with live talks, lectures, and workshops by world acclaimed researchers and authors featuring topics like human origins, ancient technologies, indigenous teachings, workshops, a mass meditation, yoga and sound healing, music, and so much more. This is Jimmy Church, by the way, and I'll be your host all weekend long. Don't miss our intimate sky watch and meteor shower over the infamous Area 51 airspace in Rachel, Nevada, with special surprise celebrity host guiding us through the night. This event will sell out. For more information and tickets, please visit DisclosureFest.org. Hi, everybody. Jimmy Church here. Very special announcement. And that is we are shipping Fade to Black t-shirts again. It's been almost two years. We did a full upgrade to the website. So you can head over to JimmyChurchRadio.com. It's all simple to do. And it's right there. Remember, we broadcast four nights a week, Monday through Thursday. We bring you the best, the brightest, the most knowledgeable and amazing guests, the best conversations. We do that four nights a week. We also do four days a week. We broadcast the news, and we do that live, too, as well. I, it's not a one-man show. I do it with website support. I do it with producers. I do it with writers and artists. All contribute to the show. The best way to help support what we do here is with the Fade to Black t-shirt. And you can get your Fade to Black t-shirt one of two ways. First... Go to jimmychurchradio.com, order a shirt. It's really that simple. You're going to get a tracking number, it's going to get shipped, and it's going to get autographed. The second way to get a shirt is with a Game Changer membership. Now, the Game Changer membership not only includes a free t-shirt, but you get a private email to me. You get unlimited commercial free downloads. You have full access to the website, and everything includes includes 
free shipping, and everything is autographed. So help support the show. Get your Fade to Black t-shirt today. The links are below. You can just go to jimmychurchradio.com, and it's right on the website. So there you go. I'm Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. I'm so excited that I just have one thing to say. Go back, Lee Tappy. This is Robert Clotworthy, the narrator of your favorite television show, Ancient Aliens. And I want to remind everyone that November 10th, 11th, and 12th at the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, Disclosure Fest is happening. Yes, Stairway to the Stars. And guess what? I'm going to be part of an Ancient Aliens panel. I will be sharing the stage with the biggest stars of Ancient Aliens, Nick Pope. David Childress, Jason Martell, William Henry, all hosted by Jimmy Church. Is it possible that this will be the most amazing convention ever? Could it be that if you don't get your tickets, you'll regret it? Ancient astronaut theorists say, yes. See you in Vegas. River Moon Coffee, makers of the Fade to Black blend. Truly the best coffee on planet Earth. Just visit rivermoonwellness.com or, or their Amazon store. It's all simple to do. You can check out the Fade to Black blend, the Game Changer blend, or any of their Black Moon Wellness products. It's the only coffee I drink. It is the best, and it's Doc. Again, rivermoonwellness.com. All right, welcome back. Robert Clotworthy did a commercial for us. I mean, I'm, 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 that it, that's going to be my screensaver, like for the rest of my life. What we should have done, <laughs> what we we should have gotten Clotworthy to go, the Leo King. <laughs> it was great. He does it. I felt like I was watching the show. I was like. Yeah. <laughs> The Leo King. <laughs> but, you know, I, I I don't think he's wrong. I, I really believe he's right. And it's not some commercial. It's actually just him being like, this is going to be the like, this is radically different than anything that's ever been put together. You know, like, this uh, is mixing all the right pieces at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's always been our goal. You know, that is. And, you know, I've got a couple of surprises uh, that I can't mention. When I say I, I'm talking about Adrian, and and I put some things together that uh, that there's going to be some appearances there. And we couldn't, uh, you know, the foundation's involved and there's things that are going on. So uh, we couldn't necessarily advertise. Um, but you are going to miss that. There are going to be people. That you can, there's streaming options, and we've got some stuff, and and you can go to the website, and if you can't attend, uh, there's ways to to check it out. But there are people that are going to be out there uh, in about a month, going, man, I was going to go, and I can't believe I didn't. It's it's going to be like that, and and I'm I'm just very excited. Plus, I get to DJ with you. I get to you know. Can is, I, can is, I, can are I we going to be scratching? Can, can I bring something up? Can I bring something up? Yeah. I've done a lot of cool things in my life. I am blessed and humbled about some of the opportunities uh, that have uh, uh, been presented to me. One of the coolest things, period, in my life was the night that I was coming down to see you and I'm walking through the lobby and I see Linda Moulton Howe talking with a group of people, and it's like 11 o'clock. And I go and I grab her. I pulled her away. Jimmy, what, what, what? I said, no, you're coming with me. What are we going to do? We're being abducted by Jimmy Church. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go dance. What? No, 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 no. Linda, you're my date. And, and pulled her downstairs and walked her up to you. And she got into the DJ booth, and her eyes. Remember, you. you I, yeah, she she was like and, a natural and scratching, and, and then and, you and, were and, there, and, so I started throwing in like different rock remixes. 
And, and to have to watch Linda, you and I, it's all on video, by the way. The, the video is incredible. But you and I were just what kind of joyful experience is that for you and I to just turn around and watch Linda waka 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 waka, right? And when she figured that out, we couldn't get her out of the DJ booth. I know. And it wasn't like it was turned down to like normal levels. Like we were, it was we bumping. Were rocking. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was, it was an unbelievable moment. And to watch her, uh, you know, she's 82, man, 82, rocking, scratching. And it was, uh, and we ended up, uh, we, we, I don't know, an hour. Right? Yeah, it was till, like about, it was about an hour. Yeah, till like midnight, one in the morning. We were I mean, I kept going. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. like you know, it was so that much was like fun. the that was like an experiment uh, that was done. So it, it worked out really good. I'm doing it again at Conscious Life, and then of course I I'm doing it at Stairway to the Stars too. So I, I, like, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. And uh, and you're bringing the full rig too. So yeah, yeah, I can't wait for that. Um, I, I so wanted I, to, oh yeah, please. I, I wanted to ask you um, about something. You and I uh, talk a lot about ET and contact, and it was funny to hear you say earlier. You know, my my pal Palladian brothers and sisters, and and things. Um, but what do, what are the planets saying about this? And 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 contact and everything else that is going on with with governments and the media. What are the planets? Are are they are they in agreement with what is happening? One hundred percent, they're in agreement with what we're not seeing, what we're all waiting to see. So we've already seen the drops that's happened in a more official level in Congress this year, which goes with Pluto coming into Aquarius. Like it was like. That was easy to predict. A lot of astrologers and all of us said the beginning of disclosure will be showing up with this Pluto Aquarius. And then it was only there for three months and then it dropped back in. But what's the most interesting is like, look at Twitter turning into X. Planet X. Matrix. The two solar eclipses, the one we just had and the one coming up in April. Xing through America into Texas. Okay. What's even more interesting is in Raiders of the Lost Ark, Indiana Jones, there's a war happening in the world. But what are the governments doing? They're looking for artifacts. Okay. What people don't realize right now when I looked at the Egypt discovery and they're not revealing is like everybody's looking over here. But nobody's knowing what's really happening in all these other areas of all these discoveries and all these looking for things and taking it as fast as they can to the next level. And so that's what the big surprise is going to be through all this is discovering human origins, which with ET aspects, UAP stuff, it's all lining up for beyond our wildest dreams. And so that's where it gets a little scary, I would say, because then people start to almost not believe it, right? Like, it's like, oh, this is just another conspiracy, right? So that's where it's going to be very difficult. Pluto always at the end of a transit in the beginning. So 2008, there was an enemy. It was George Bush and Obama was the savior, right? So now it starts to create who's enemies and who's the savior again. Every time Pluto switches signs, it starts to do that. And you got to for a second, just back away for a second. And you got to be able to be like, what's the real story going on here, right? And that right now, it's like, to me, it's like, you mix in everything happening now. Nobody's talking about the UAPs publicly anymore. Huh, why? What's going on with these discoveries in, in Egypt? What's happening with the X? Why did Twitter switch to X? So that's where I get into more of the John D or Nostradamus, where you look at it all. It's the Roman numeral 10. It's the two Vs. It's the cross. Every the X is planet X, and that's where Eris, which is a planet that was found, an exoplanet in 2005 in January. The return of Eris to where it was exactly where it is now is Christopher Columbus discovering the new world. It's 
the conquistadors, but it's also the Mayan and the Aztec empire falling to the Spanish. And that was an invasion also coming into new lands, but it's like, there's no new lands. The only new lands to go to are the ones we don't know about. Right. And then you take, okay. So X now it's not Twitter SpaceX. So people are like, Oh, okay. But then they don't realize planet X. So really it was because Planet X represents 10, but even in Nostradamus' prophecies, he goes to chapter X, 10, Roman numeral X. John Dee's work, it all is about X, okay? So it's like, wow, the two eclipses are going to make an X. The one just happened, and it goes through Texas, and it meets in Texas. That's where SpaceX is. We don't have no idea what's really going on. It reminds me of Raiders of the Lost Ark because it's like, oh, here's the American government showing up to Indiana Jones, like, hey, the Nazis found something over here, right? In that whole movie, and they're in Egypt and they're going to find the Lost Ark, right? You know, in the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant. Well, it's like, it might not be that, right? But it's that idea that that's what's happening right now. And, and all then- this other stuff, and even maybe partly the retaliation on all this stuff is like, there's something else going on. And there's also where people try to hold on. And with Saturn and Neptune and Pisces, it makes it difficult. The last time was 1523, this transit came. And this was where religion and the fractions of religion happened with Martin Luther from 1518, where we just had Pluto Saturn literally in 2020. And then it's shorter amount of time. Now within three years, now we have a Saturn Neptune, which happened 1518, all the way back with Martin Luther. Oh, okay, Saturn, Pluto. And then, oh, by 2020 or by 1523, okay, Martin Luther's excommunicated and so forth. But he starts to make everybody look at everything different and begin to go, oh, my God, do I need to follow this pope anymore? Because you have to remember that was a big deal, the Reformation. So we're going through do you know, a, do you know a that massive that, Reformation. Do you know that that was today in 1523? when he when he oh he went when he nailed when he nailed his um uh what do you call him the uh the 45 the the 45 90 oh man i know i I forgot what it's called the uh his 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 rebuttals to the pope but they were called i forgot i don't know why i know it at the top of my head right now but it was it was either called the 45 or the 90 it was i i always Always got that confused, but t- today was the day he nailed it to the church door. There it in, is in in 1523. Isn't that weird? 500 years ago today, and and you bring it up, and and that's just a coincidence. But or is it right? <laughs> or is I mean, it? Yeah, I mean, but that's the whole where we're at is like if we're thinking of reformation of of humanity, well. That connects to religion, but really religion's a belief of of the cosmology now of how we're all here, which has been the new thing. And that's where it's going to cross every paradigm. And so what's going to happen to humanity? Who's going to be willing to evolve into understanding the next phase of ourselves and who's not? And what's scary is it's going to be difficult for people to let go of what you know was a time or if you think of the ages age of pisces is coming to its end that deals with religion it deals with the ideas that are also deceptive right so there's a cloaking of what's really been a world that's not the world so it's more than our human origin but what is this world what is really happened here what's been seeded here i mean it kind of reminds me of prometheus the movie a little bit and the ideas of like Oh, what did they look up at? And that movie was so weird. And they looked up and it was like the seven sisters and they went all the way there to find out, oh, we were seated here, but these are things to try. I don't think it's gonna be as dark as that movie and going into, you know, Aliens Covenant. But it definitely is. That's what's happening behind the scenes with governments with Pluto still and Capricorn. Capricorn rules governments. And we've seen this since 2008. Every part of this is also the mixture of what happened then? It was like, oh gosh, you know, there's financial crisis. Keep the the government gets involved and keeps all these corps up, but really, it's been undercover funding, right? So where is that? The cross into the UAPs? Which ones are real, extraterrestrial and non-terrestrial and non-human origin, and which ones are our own government? 
there, it's going to be very difficult because it's going to be the mixture of people thinking it's revelations every decade. Right. But, but feeling like it when it's really just evolution moving on. We, I always say there's an astrologer through every age. There's astrologers, right? So, well, there's prostitutes too. Like those are the two oldest jobs, you know. And there was an astrologer 10,000 years ago and there was a prostitute. Yeah, or, or, or a prostitute that was an astrologer. Yeah, and, and you know, so that's where we're at, where well, Justin... Me, something important, though, and I know you're aware of it, you just let it slip by you. So let's let's back up for a second. No and you brought up star seeds earlier, right? And and we, I I, I forget. Uh, it, it, there's been a few comedy TV shows, um, uh, People of Earth, and 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 whatever these different uh, comedy shows about about uh, abductees, Morgan and Mindy, and, even and all that kind of stuff. Like they, they joked about star seeds, right? They go to right. a UFO convention and there's a star seeds table there and and somebody wearing a tinfoil hat. And 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 so I get that. But we are all stardust. That that's it. That's a fact. That is a fact. A star gave up its life so you and I could sit here and talk tonight. That's a fact. These are the facts. But now let's back up. What just happened? We've we've got Bennu, the asteroid. It 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 got dug up, packed onto a, a little ship, transported back to Earth. To think that we have that technology to pull that off is I like know. crazy. Town. Uh, that's that's crazy. Back and that was drop. done in 2017. So 2017. But do you know what's weird about that? Because I want to add a weird part to that. That's okay. also the same oh, time that Uamua was around. Are you? Sh are we sure that that was that asteroid, or did they really go to Uamua? What, what yeah. would you have done if you had the power to go to an asteroid to pick up, and the one that is the weirdest one that it, everybody agrees it tilts weird. We've never. It's from not our solar system. It's interesting. Which one would you go dig on? Yeah, I would dig on that one for sure, and 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 so. What we have found, and not only on meteorites on on Earth, but on uh, a, a previous on Osiris Rex, um, uh, a, 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 another expedition to an asteroid that we're digging up and finding on these asteroids, the basic sugars, the simple mm -hmm. sugars that make up RNA. So I to know. suggest, right? To suggest. What I am laying on the table here is that you and I, all of us, are star seeds. Right, we are, that we were seeded here. Yeah, it was it's universal, man. It's universal. There's only so many. How, there's only so many uh, particles and chemicals and and elements right. in the universe. That's it. There's only so many ways to combine them, and it's it's it, the. The fact that these simple sugars that make up RNA, RNA, for everybody that doesn't understand, you may hear it, but let me explain to you. It's very simple. RNA is DNA, but just one strand. It's not a double helix. It's one strand. Okay? It's called RNA, and it carries the information and the instructions for DNA to go and do its thing. And it survives space. Right now, it's just like, wait a minute. So, yeah, our human origins and these things that you're talking about, it's about we are going to, we've been asking the questions. Are we ready for these kinds of answers? And, it reminds me of Jurassic Park when they find in through a mosquito and they were like, oh, let's take the DNA out of this blood that happened to be on a sap that had, you know, kept encapsulated this mosquito and oh we found the rna and then let's mix it with some frog dna and then here's dinosaurs it's like i don't think we might be doing that although i wouldn't be surprised i think though though the the idea of like what's really going on behind the scenes is was that the actual asteroid or was it ua, ua mua because avi who is the professor who is the one who says it's an alien craft right yeah. he yeah, just obviously. went into the oceans just two months ago 
retrieved from asteroids that fell out of the sky and he was happier than a clam went out in the middle of south america went all the way out there went into the ocean got it just showed pictures of it and is like saying from his initial studies confirmed it's not from here it's extraterrestrial and he we're still kind of waiting for more so it's like we're all watching these other shows happening while these are the main shows and that's where the AI question comes up with quantum computing in the same time period as, as, as these asteroids and us retrieving, bringing back 2017 to 2018 to 2019 was when the astrology was about to build up to where we all said as astrologers, like 2020 is going to be insane. And that's when they turn on that computer. The first one, the quantum computer that was supercomputer that Google actually had. And it was, it looks like an alien. It does. Right. Then on top of that, I, I was just like tripping recently because I'm like, OK, I've been teaching this to people at the astrology and I'm thinking about what's what I'm seeing and all, all this human origin stuff coming out. And then AI right now. And they're now trying to be like, oh, you know, like it's maybe unsafe. We need to make Biden just came out and made a new executive order about how there's got to be certain ways that has to be dealt with. There's yeah, been yeah. tons of people even on Google staff that have said, like, it's the scariest thing in the world just last week. Again, another creator of AI. And that's what's interesting is, like, was that AI seeded here through the UAPs, through technology? Like, did we really create technology or is that alien? Are, what's wrong with that? Right. It, it, at some point, we're going to have to accept all of this as fact. Yeah, I mean, like, you know. And I'm talking about... And that's when you talked about evolution or how our DNA is altered. Technology has been the altercation that has been an evolutionary, like, you know, it's it's taken Darwinism and kind of thrown it on a curveball. You know, like, that wasn't expected for something that's not of a natural origin to evolve us. And we did it so fast, right? Correct. It, yes. It, 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 with, with with atomic energy of 45 coming off with then up UFO showing up in 47 Roswell and all. And it's like, that's actually astrologically, you go back and where we're at now, it's the culmination point of like, if they're going to try and contain it, it's going to release itself and cause more problems than good. We we don't understand because we're in the moment, right? Yeah. But we don't understand that just one lifetime ago, one, one, I know 100 one. years ago, right? One, we we still had covered wagons. I know. Right? We, we had, if you go back to the year 1900, we're in 2023, so 123 years ago, one life, one generation, right? Gas lamps lighting up the streets. Right? Which, by the way, using, because it's Halloween, that was what it was about, not jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins. Yes, it was about exactly. gas lamps that were and, lit. And, and from 1900... We from that point forward, if you lived for 69 years, just 69 years, you're born in 1900, you lived 69 years, you went from covered wagons and horses and gas lamps to frigging Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin. Yeah. And well, and planes and, and being on a jet airplane, moon landings, telephone Every stereos. Man. And that's oh, oh, and that's what's weird is like the, it just came out. You know, I love talking about Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. It was just last week that they like we gave it a software patch, Voyager I, 2, I, I, to make yeah. sure that before we give it a software patch of Voyager 1, because we're going to use it as long as we can. And it's still getting power and it's having some problems where every time we thrust it, it's clogging up so we're going to re-engineer the software to roll before the thrust and not have to do it to keep it going why are they keeping them going when they're already beyond our solar system they're outside they're in the heliopause they're god knows where at the same time that we are 
uncovering this. As something went, uh, as we went out, that was 2012 with the Voyager one, but Voyager two passing Pluto 2018, and then going into that is when um, uh, comes in, us taking stuff from asteroids in, and it's like that's what it's all bringing. And that was during a, the crazy American eclipse. Now we're having two crazy American eclipses that are exiting right through Texas right through all of America, through Washington, to all the way to Washington State, to Washington, D.C., down, then going through Mexico and the South America. So obviously the universe is pointing at the Americas as the place of where it's all going to be uncovered. Where are you going to be? I, I'm going to be in Indianapolis for that. And it's going in right April? over. Yeah, I'm, it's going right over my home hometown. Oh, so that's cool. I'm, yeah, I'm going to be there for the eclipse. I cannot. When I when I looked at the map, you know, and I was like, okay, so where where do I want? I was like, what? Indy? It's dude. It's going right over Indianapolis. It's going over my old high school. So that's where I'm going to be. Where are you going to be for the eclipse? Have you picked it out? I have not picked it out yet. Although I feel that by that a that April coming up here in 2024, we'll be in. There'll be so many interesting things coming out to say the least. We'll all be on our toes. What? <laughs> that 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 I don't know if it, it, planning at this moment will be the same because that's where the curveball of Aquarius comes in in January and Pluto comes back into Aquarius until September, and these eclipses happen with Pluto and Aquarius, and that creates the X, which goes through San Antonio and a little bit north, like basically between Austin and San Antonio, Texas. But it's just the idea of Texas, like it's like the Alamo now, like of where something's going to pop off, where all the events need to be triggered. It's like V is for Vendetta, like all the dominoes, the last dominoes are being done right now. So uh, I, I don't know if you answered my question. So let me ask, ask it again. Uh, I love how you and I can just take right and left turns. And it's the funnest part about uh, hanging out with you. Are we prepared to to find out that yes. we are just stardust? Uh, yeah, but I'm going to say something controversial. That those that have... I love Timothy Leary as an example because I feel that he's somebody who can was controversial and you can talk about him today and it's not like a ill thing to say about him, right? Like he broke the ideas of so many belief systems or people and really whether it was him in the way of living as a human being to, I mean, the guy was in his forties with a family and a wife and kids and took mushrooms. The next thing you know, he's the leader of the free movement of spirituality and breaking out of the system and, you know, turning in, but tuning out, right? that those that are religiously obsessed will have the hardest time to accept what's going to come. That those who have already broken that will be much easier to go with what's happening. Because if we just use basic astrology and more of a the ages, the end of age of Pisces, that's going to be very hard. Like people, I know there's a fentanyl problem. Religious is worse than it's more intense addiction because it's built within our DNA and our families and our families and our whole genealogy lines where religion for the last couple of thousand years has been where you feel guilty or you, you know, I still don't want to go to the wrong place. The idea that you're going to the wrong place is off just the moral character of you as a human being, not, because you didn't do this many, you know, I'll use another, any kind of religion, right? I don't even want to talk about it, but we're, that's where we're seeing holy wars of whose land is what land. And that's been going on for these last couple thousand years, very intense. That that's where, if you use Martin Luther as an example, times infinity mixed with bringing in what you're not talking, nobody's talking about it, but it's like the UAP thing is ready to bust, right? while we're in all these weird conflicts. And at the same time, 
the research and the origins of humanity are being researched and not being talked about that much and being kind of thrown to the side as also James Webb Telescope is taking pictures of Jupiter and seeing auroras on the North and South Pole like never before, finding all these things that are just beyond most, it's now to where people are just kind of like one year at the other, but it's beyond our comprehension. That that you're mixing all those in, it's a it's a it's a shift to the age of Aquarius that's too extreme. So to be like Timothy Leary, to break out of that old mold, is a good example of who's going to be able to get through. Now some people thought he was crazy, but you know at the same time, to me he wasn't. You know it was like he was having debates publicly, you know, with 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 leading figures in government and, and about morality and so forth and was like get out of my way stop programming the people and he even predicted correctly in one of his famous debates he's like technology and all that is going to control human beings and they were like no these computers don't do crap they just put input numbers in and he's like no he knew back then so it's like how John D, how did John D or how did Nostradamus or how did Robert Flood or how did all the alchemists know in the 1500s, they drew the outer planets. They drew the boundaries of Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. How did they know that when we didn't discover it supposedly then? So our idea of time in 2020 with all the Capricorn is what exploded. The Gregorian calendar, the Julian calendar. We don't really know where we're at in the time. And that's the other thing that's going to flip the script. If you, if you flip the script too many times on a religion, it has no basis anymore. And then that, what are all those people going to do? They're going to freak and think that it's the end times and that anything that's coming out that's really the truth is the devil or is... But doesn't it? Okay, okay. But do, won't it? Won't the effect cement their beliefs? No, you don't think so. No, I mean, if I were to basically tell you that how many um, saviors were born on December twenty fifth and rose three days after, or twenty first and rose three days after, and were born on the twenty fifth and born of a vir virgin, and, you know, it's like, do we have to go through it again? But that that just you know what that says to me. Jesus was an alien. That's all that that says. And and the other well, part, to be honest, I, I I I agree with you that. But but do you have to remember though that people are not saying that now? So I'm going to use a, I'm going to be controversial for a second because Salem witch trials. What happened with that? Oh my gosh, you're not this. You're a witch. Right now in the astrology community, we are dealing with the Christian community thinking that anything demonic, and it was just put out on CNN. Let this two days ago that 15% of the country thinks in America that it's being run by a government that is run by demonic pedophiles. So when you ask a Christian, what's demonic occultism, astrology, tarot. So they are going out in full front now saying, if you believe in astrology, you talk about it, you're that you're letting the demon of that unpure sign come into you and act out. And it's spreading everywhere now. So if you talk about anything outside of scripture, right? But and so, so isn't the answer to this is why I say it would cement their belief system, because then if you take their belief system um, uh, as it is written, then everything is universal. That Earth and man are, you know. Uh, 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 a duplicate of heaven and the kingdom of heaven, which is up there, which is out in the universe, and that we are in, uh, you know, his image, which is out there in the universe. Therefore, it's universal. So I would say if I was an organized religion, that's my spin. That's how okay. I attempt to keep control of of the, of the system that that uh, you know they they've been building upon for a couple of thousand years that that's what i'm suggesting is yeah and is, i think you're right i think i think you're right i just think the problem is that people thought trump wouldn't leave office right that he wouldn't do the the proper thing and and leave the office right and let a new executive come in the proper way to just leave and let somebody in but he did do it problem is religion ain't going to do that 
right now, especially over land. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Right. So uh, then you tell them that the land wasn't that wasn't the story. But what, are they okay. going to easily just be like, yeah, OK, because all all the religions pretty much fight for that land. That's the interesting part. Well, right? okay. the Christians so, held that land in the same transits we're in now. So when I see America trying to get involved, I go, are you all just a bunch of Christians who want to be Knights Templars again and take over the land? That's what the astrology says. You, you brought up a really good point earlier, and it was brilliant. We've got a new papyrus, right? Correct. 50, 50 feet. We've got the Dead Sea Scrolls. We've got uh, a lot of uh, uh, history that has not been transcribed or revealed to the public. And that includes India, the Sumerian tablets, uh, things all over Egypt. That uh, the Dead Sea Scrolls, Lord knows. I know, and they have the AI world. looking at it and actually figuring it out, L looking through the levels yeah. of. It. And and so, but my point is, there is stuff there that will unravel the dogma that has been fed to us. Correct. It, it, it doesn't matter what what religion. Right? I'm not talking. I, about I agree. That. I just feel like you know that's a panic attack times a thousand for somebody who holds on to that. That's what's coming. Like, what are we going to do to help those people with with no judgment, right? Because the other thing is it's based off judgment. And so their idea, like Terminator 2, is Judgment Day. When it's not Judgment Day. How accurate. Out of all of the movies, uh, now, uh, I, I, I got to say The Matrix is is way up there, right? It, it It truly is. But if you go back and you think about Terminator 2, Right. And you really take a look at that movie. Uh, when did it come out? 1991, 91, 92, 91. Right. How accurate was that? Oh, it's I, so accurate. It's, I mean, even the whole series, especially the last one, which I love the most because they finished the story like Dark Fate. And that was what Sarah Connor has said is like, it's not fate. It's the fate we create, right? She would, she would always write that. But at the end of the movie, if you watch the whole, if you watch the last movie, they realize you can't stop the fate. You can't rewrite it. <laughs> you can't. Right. So like, that's the whole thing. They sell you a judgment day. Oh, we averted it. And Oh, you know, John Connor survives. And then in number three, it's like, Oh wait, it was just to survive to get him to the right place with the girl whose dad is running the new Skynet in the military who turns it on and then they get in the bunker and survive and they're in the bunker that the president's supposed to be in and it's just him and then some girl, which they make a baby, of course, which then goes to the fourth one and then the fights of that. But then the fifth one, it's like, there is no John Connor because the way that the time uh, shit worked out, it was like, they have to now use a new person and some random girl who's on the wrong side of the border at the wrong time and having to get through, it's crazy. <laughs> right but like, that's the whole idea yeah. is the more you try to control the fate you can't control the planets it's not like you can take a lasso and be like in texas and be like yeehaw and take jupiter and just try and pull it back to stop its time okay so if if all of this is the case now this is where you are going to be a little controversial i have no problem with that okay is if if astrology, and I'm with you, right, if it does what it does, are we suggesting there is no free will, that everything is determined, and that math is math, and the stars are going to be where they are, the planets are going to be where they are, and therefore, because every combination of attraction of a couple of atoms that go they they are doing that because that's the math unfolding and that's the universe unfolding is that what we are suggesting here 100 percent. i mean the fact that we know when a lunar eclipse is going to be we know exact ahead of time it's the only thing in the world you can calculate to be for 100 percent for sure everything else is 
not constant, but variables. Like a tree, we don't know if it's going to be there forever. We could say that's the most solid oak tree in my house. And then you're sitting there, it falls on you from a storm. Now, somebody just, okay, this is from Moon Nation. If you believe in fate, then free will means nothing. Now, but this is where I will argue the point. Because I'm kind of with math, right? If you think about the creation of a star and 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 how planets are created, all of that happens because of a, a, a chemical process and gravity. It's math. It's all math. It's just, it's just right? It right. all happens. Right. right. So I'm with that. And everything, it, it's the journey, right? And if everything didn't happen the way that it did perfectly all the way through to this very second at 845, 39, 40, 41 West Coast time, you and I aren't here. The earth isn't here, right? Okay, so if that's the case, then free will is an illusion. But that doesn't change things. The thought of free will, the joy of making a decision between chicken or seafood or a steak for dinner, right? The joy that you get from that decision of having that free will, that doesn't change. You mean right? the will to have the food because if you don't eat and you're naturally hungry, you'll die. Well, that part two, yeah, that part two, of or, course. Or, or like the, well, I believe the only, if I were to say, okay, somebody believes in free will, what would you go do with it? They're going to take it from the perspective that they're still a human and think of all the things that they've been shown in this reality. So if you were to really be free will, you wouldn't want to breathe. You would want to be in the, another space system or whatever. What would you start creating? A house? Oh, that's a human thing. That's a predetermined thing that has been set within the consciousness of who we are. So to break out into consciousness, to create outside of that, I do believe that's what's coming. But that's where we, when we get to the roots of our origins and we know how to crack the codes that we haven't cracked yet. Right. That We're until still- that point, it's a predetermined moment for us to come to all the life we've known existed, or possibly there's, whenever you look at all the ancient civilizations, whether it's the Egyptians, the Mayans, Mesopotamia, why do they all leave? And then, and or they don't leave much of a trace except discovering the, the origins of humanity. We have to realize that maybe that there, when we find planet X, that the timing astrologically would be when we find it, that we realize that it comes to a place to when there's a moment in time that allows consciousness to break out for a moment to make its own choice. That's kind of matrixy, but also at the same time, I think the biggest choice we ever make is coming down here. You know, but again, everything that is, it's will. Everybody just wants to be like, well, I have the will to do it. Yeah, you do. And you can do it. It's just like free will would mean that, you know, you wouldn't have to breathe and that you could control your heart, which you can't. Even when you sleep, you can't control your heart. You can't control your breath when you're asleep. So the best breath work person, the breath person that knows how to calm themselves down, can't control their heart rhythm. Or any, like there's no control. And the, the evolutionary process, as long as it may be, I'm not talking about Darwin. Okay. Let's just talk about the Jimmy and David version of evolution. I think it, it could be clearly defined with a before and after and the before is before we found out about life in the universe the evolutionary change when we change is when we uh, find out that we are not alone right it's not it's not the, the discovery of fire it's not the gutenberg press right, right. it's not the wheel it's not a Shelby GT 500. No, I don't know. That might be in there. That might. Uh, well, maybe think, it's Carl Jung's yeah. understanding of the shadow and integrating it. Okay. Right? Okay. So, and those are all little incremental things. But what would be the big? So, like looking back. Well, that's so what I'm thinking on the big picture, right? Is like 50, we're going to see the light, but we're going to see the shadow, and we're not going to like the shadow. 
50,000 years from now, how do we define the, the evolutionary shift in, in humanity? And I would say that that point would be when we shake hands with E.T., that's when that's when the whole that's when we become earthlings and we're not yes. arguing over religious property or lines correct you know, fictitious borders and skin color and sex and as that handshake's going on there's a christian with an a, a nuclear button pushing it nah you, you know why you know why you know why i i always have faith that no matter what we will always end up doing the right thing i agree yeah we got to do the wrong thing a lot to do the right it's like you know i sound like some guru first go left you must go right <laughs> no, i mean you're correct yeah, but yeah, I'm just yeah. like it, it. It feels like a climactic movie, the end of Age of Pisces, where the shadow is going to be so dark looking that you have to pull through and remember it's the, it's it's the predetermined movie to get us to the place that we have no idea what free will is yet, what it feels like, what it looks like, um, or even what we are. I mean, what would be the weirdest part is if ET was you know a superhuman and it was like, yeah, we made you all slaves so you could figure it out. What? Yeah, right? now go go back to work. Because right. you guys were going around the system and killing everyone. Or oh, some Jesus. I'm just using random shit. I'm not saying it's from astrology or anything, but it's like I'm throwing the concepts of like we have to be prepared for not the rosy picture that we are trying to predict it to look like. Like Pluto deals with the shadow and we've never seen it consciously as humanity come into a craze to find our origin. Our origin is going to have a shadow we don't like. You're not paying attention. Look at my shirt. You ready? Yeah. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I got to do it like this. No, I got to move you over. Okay. Hold on. Maybe it's this. Okay. You ready? Yeah. That's so, yeah. Aliens built there. Aliens built Earth. Abe. It's Abe. <laughs> I mean, speaking Abe. of Abe, I mean, you know, like he was sitting with Freemasons in the pictures. I mean, they all had their hand in their pockets, all the generals and all the people. I mean, that's what the other thing is, is like we're coming back to where the founding fathers with the astrology are with the revolution. And I've been hearing a lot about the war cries that this is a Christian nation, although it was founded on Masons and yet. It was also Roman columns, the obelisk in Washington, D.C. There's nothing Christian about it. It's much more Masonic. And if anything, Jesus would have a heart attack if he woke up in America and was in Washington, D.C. He would think he would be back in Rome where he was going to be killed. Uh, what is, uh, what's Pluto everybody's talking about? A new TV series on Netflix? Oh, I didn't realize Oh, wait, 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 wait. That's uh, uh, oh, it's animated. Yeah, I saw it. I, I haven't watched it yet. I haven't watched it yet. So, but uh, I've heard it's really, really good. So it's. But if, 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 if Pluto would have allowed to have been stayed as a planet, it was Eris that came when we found it in 2005 that then recategorized in 2006 that Pluto now is no longer the ninth planet. And Neptune's the eighth planet, and then Eris is not the tenth planet, which should have been planet X, right? So they knocked both of those down. But what's really yeah. weird is Eris in mythology, she is the one who causes strife and discord. She is the one who puts the golden apple into because she does, and she's the Trojan horse, right? The whole idea of the Trojan horse and that golden apple, and then having Aphrodite and all these people start having this debate of who's the fairest of them all. No joke. That's where it all comes from. And she enjoys it because she felt like she was pissed because she wasn't the one invited to the wedding. And then Zeus comes along and goes, I'll determine who's the fairest of them all. So it creates all this strife and discourse, which creates, oh, Aphrodite is, even though she wasn't the best looking one, she was the sexy one that uses sex energy to get it. And then what happens? Oh, Helena Troy gets taken and that causes a Trojan horse war and stuff. And the North Node right now, where these eclipses have been, have been with the planet Eris. And Eris is a 559-year cycle around the sun. It's exactly where it was with Columbus, the invasion of 
the Aztec Empire, every aspect you see about it, we are about to deal with the uncoverings that are wild beyond our wildest dreams. And the fact is, is all the strife and discourse, people are inviting themselves into it. They're biting the golden apple, which is intention to see who's not paying attention and who's just going to fall into it and fight over all these things that are insignificant to what's going to be revealed. Well, and, and humanity, since the dawn of man, has always had those three fundamental questions uh, there. And because the answers have never been revealed, that's our comfort zone chasing that you know who are we where do we come from and what happens after we die right okay and 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 they've all they're always that's it you look to the stars are we alone you know we watched a loved one die and then you think about oh i wonder what's going to happen to me you know what's over there what where did we come these are basic things and they're always one step away from us one step away well they're not that far away now right these yeah. answers are right in front of us and are about to be revealed and we've always had like i said you know in, in a weird way the comfort zone of not knowing right we we want we, we're chasing the answer we're chasing we're chasing we ask the questions we ask the, but it's about to happen that's the that's the question i think it is part of our dna you know, that we've been wondering about this. If you cannot help but understand that Stone Age man, before he could speak, Stone Age woman, before they could speak, were having these thoughts. Those ones that were called to it, I would say. It's like close encounters of the third kind. Richard Dreyfus is called to the mountain with others, and they understand when they're speaking through lights and sound right the calling and that's what's weird is if you think of the masonic history in america like they're they're using the same callings that other civilizations use where they're giving you the answers with you having to figure it out right and that's what i think is going to be kind of the harder part of what's coming is like people just don't want to like look at that they think like the idea of back with the true cross which i always like to say with constantine when he created the idea of the council of nicaea Mm -hmm. We're in astrology of that too. And the irony of that astrology is like, if imagine if his mom had an Etsy store selling the idea of the cross we see today for Jesus and she never sold one. So he decides when he creates the Christian doctrine and they all have all these converted paganistic priests that study astrology and alchemy and do all this old esoteric occultist work in paganistic ways. Now our Christian, like, it's like magic, like wand, like Disney, like, ding, we're Christian priests now and Christian, right? Okay. Well, what's the cross going to be? Well, my mom has that cross idea and she's a saint now, by the way. Okay. The Etsy store never sold anything. So if you're Constantine, who, by the way, he was with the sun, soul. That's what he praised the whole time until the day of his death. He's like, okay, baptize me so we can keep this whole thing going. All right. That's yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so the cross that people wear and the cross that they look at, we don't even know if that's the cross of Jesus that he was crucified on or anything. That's all because Constantine's mom couldn't sell any of crosses on Etsy. That's right. That's right. That was that way. That was her. So that's life. what I mean. Is like how much of the story is that people follow when all this stuff starts to come out. Like the irony was when King Charles the Third, William Lilly, when Charles the Second was after the civil war where it was horrible right the idea that oh we can run ourselves and it turned into the worst aspect ever it became a purist country where you weren't even allowed to celebrate holidays by oliver cromwell right the worst so then eventually the people go okay we want a king back so then charles ii goes to william L lily and goes hey okay you're an astrologer, find me the best date. And they give him the date they want. He goes, that's on a lunar eclipse. Don't do it. What does is, what is the king do? I don't care. I'm doing it anyway. So now we have Charles III, who just came out with the Astra Carta. What was, that was the first thing he did as king. The Astra Carta from the Magna Carta of 1215 and 1217. We now have an Astra Carta. But even weirder than that is we have a king right now 
in a weird time when all these weird things are happening, he comes up with this astrocarta, but the weirdest was on his coronation. He, the Pope gave a, a piece of the true cross, the wood, to the Church of England. There has been no connection since Henry VIII, which is the same astrology as Pluto at zero degrees, like the Americans leaving the British in the colonies. Same thing, Pluto zero degrees, that's where, that's where Henry VIII goes, bye-bye, Catholic Church. I'm creating the Church of England and all the monasteries are going to be converted to Church of England and I'm in control and I'm getting my annulment. I'm going to marry Anne Berlin, okay? Same transit is what we're approaching right now. Why did the Pope give the quote-unquote true cross to the Church of England? Right now, Henry VIII and all of the Tudor line are rolling in their fucking graves. That's right. And, 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 and that lasted just two years. And and Boleyn and and right. that 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 well and then she yeah she was sleeping with other people and she also two yeah years, just two years two years that's that's and right before that Cromwell that was just fifteen years I know people, yeah. people, people think that it's as big as expanse of time um, this stuff was happening over and over again very 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 quickly um, now let's and, and, and you can even back up though. Uh, let's let's back up a little bit, because if we look at the big transition about what Christian, I'm not here to divide my audience. I just need no, everybody. no, no, no. I know. Listen to the facts here, okay? And the facts are this: everything before that, uh, before the Gutenberg Press, was verbal propaganda, and that verbal propaganda took years to spread years you had to talk you had to repeat and to get it to go From charlemagne to then yeah for sure dude it took forever but the gutenberg press comes out and now you can print the propaganda and i would argue I would argue it wasn't Rome, <laughs> right? I would argue that it wasn't the Pope and it wasn't the Vatican. I would argue that it was the Gutenberg press that created Jesus. And if you think about just what I'm trying to say, because then it was in mass, right? And it can right. be repeated, the same thing. So well, and yeah. translated Bibles out of the Latin that were only the Catholic Church had control of, and all the priests were speaking only in that Latin. They could only read it too; nobody could read it and distribute it. Right, mm -hmm. crank that thing out, man! Just, just, <laughs> just literally cranking it out. So there you go. And I will say this: Happy Halloween, everybody! Listen, David. I love you, my brother. I, I cannot wait I love to you hate too, and you. I love everyone. I'm not roasting religion. I'm just saying that you, you, you have to be willing to right now do the investigations of our origins. So you have to be willing to look at all these things. You can't. You have to. You have to. I, I watched a documentary uh, came out about six months ago. One of the most controversial things I had ever seen. Three part uh, documentary. And I found it on. I don't even remember the time, but it was like. Uh, who created Jesus, right? Or something like that. Was Jesus real? Something, whatever. And it was on, uh, you know, one of the, uh, it, was, it may have been Netflix, might have been Amazon. I'll watch all three parts. You come away from that. And now the presentation obviously is controversial, but they lay out a pretty good case, Right about uh, the, the uh, when, when you looked at Rome, Rome wanted to keep control. How do you keep control? Well, the you have the government, but you got to make the government God. So you got to go above that and say, God right. says, trust the government. And then underneath that, we've got to create something else. And, and whoop, whoop, rabbit out of the hat, and they pulled Jesus out. Jesus wasn't alive. It I was, know. it was, taught, it was, and the way that they presented it, and I, I came away from that, I was like, okay, but. Yeshua, I, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's like. Woo, the sun man. comes up and down. Yeah, yes. I got to tell you, man. I laid no. out. Yeah. Like, the sun <laughs> walks on water.
<laughs> the three kings. You I know, mean, it's, you know, but yeah, that's yeah. all of that. And, 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 and as I say good night to you, um, when you brought up Aries and Aphrodite, and we back all of that up, it's it's fundamentally the same stories that were repeated in Rome with their gods. And it was all extracted out of Egypt, going back to Osiris and Horus yes. that and and Ra and 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 every Hathor, right? And you go back to the 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 deep, deep gods of Egypt and the soap opera. The right. Soap opera. Like for real. Talk about the sun never sets. Right. So, yeah, the so, reality show the, the, the gods. Yeah. Not the Kardashians, the gods. Yeah. Oh man. David, you're the best man. And uh, I'll see you next weekend. I can't wait to hear you speak. I can't Same wait here. for your presentation. And I can't wait to uh, do the the boogie woogie with you and and I get to hang out with you for the weekend and and man, uh, Aurora and, and so be with a lot of amazing people. And I, I my last thing, my my scary ghost story would be I know we all thought the networks were based off political sides, but now it's based off what religion. So what is Chan that's, what, the, I, that's the scary yeah. story, right? Because it's like, oh, you watch that news. You're from the left wing or you're from the right wing. Now it's what news you watch is what's religion. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I was going to say, are you planning a flag here? Are you discovering things? I just mentioned the Gutenberg Press. Right? This is it. It's been going on for two thousand years. Right. So, or whenever he cranked that thing out, when was that? Four hundred. When did? What year was the Gutenberg Press? Oh no! All the way at fourteen hundreds. Yeah, it was fourteen hundred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sixty. I'm I'm entitled not to have a memory. Yeah, hey, no, Leo. it's all good. Leo King. Right yeah, on. Good. I'll see you soon, Jimmy, and everyone else there in Vegas. Much love. Yeah. Thanks for having me on again. Yeah, safe travels, man. Give my best to Sophia and Aurora, okay? I'll, I'll talk to you. Bye, Peace. brother. David the Leo King Palmer. That was, I know that we went six minutes over. I apologize to everybody. That was a fantastic conversation, and that's what happens when David is on the show. So I am going to get out of here. What? What 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 do I have going on tomorrow night? Does anybody know? What's what's the schedule? What's the schedule for the week? Oh man, uh, tomorrow night is. Uh, uh, oh yeah, Jason Martell. How can I forget about that? Jason Martell is with us tomorrow night from Ancient Aliens. So we'll see everybody tomorrow night. Fade to Black is produced by Hill J. Palmer, Renee Newman, and Michelle Freed. All right. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Genocide. Happy Halloween, everybody. Webmaster is Drew the Geek. Music, you're listening to him right now. Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network. And this broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2023 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be, are you ready? Rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. That's right. Until tomorrow night with Jason Martell, I want you to be safe. Go back, Lee Tappy.